A hidden cutscene. An alternate text under strange circumstances. A hidden animation with a low chance of occurring. These are the holy grail of obscure Pokemon information. Something about viewing a phenomenon in a Pokemon game that very few players have ever witnessed before is extremely enticing to me. I decided to collect as many of these instances as I could find, and that is this video. I'm not sure what this video will be titled, as the things I kept finding and adding to this list kept leading me down different paths. Cutscenes, animations, text, rarely seen battles, either way, you're about to see a lot of things in Pokemon that you've probably never seen before. Now I'm sure everyone has heard about the 1 out of 64 chance to see a hiker while you ride the cable car in Route 112 in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. I covered this fact actually almost two years ago when I uploaded my first video about Pokemon facts. But I've always wondered if this is all that can appear. If they included this one circumstance, it seems likely that there could be more. I've had multiple comments saying that they've seen a Latios or Latias, which I sadly just don't believe, because there's no footage of it out there. But I finally found out that there is another thing that can appear on this mountain, and it is a Pokemon. In Emerald, there's a 1 out of 64 chance to see a Zigzagoon walking up the side of the mountain as you ride the cable car. But, due to a bug in the game's code, the Zigzagoon will never appear, so it went entirely unused but we can still see what it looks like, thanks to this YouTube channel called Lactose. Funnily enough, this wasn't exclusive to Emerald. In Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, this should have been present in the games as well. Except, following the pattern that Emerald set by replacing Poochyennas with Zigzagoons, it would have originally been a Poochyenna climbing the mountain in those games. In Pokemon Emerald, there's a lost animation in the game that hardly anyone has ever seen, because it was taken out of the code. YouTuber Flametix added in one frame of delay to the string of code that allowed the animation to be seen in-game, and I'm about to show you what it is. If you watch the little box where Caterpie's info is shown, you'll see the animation play out when he reaches level 7. Listen closely because the animation has audio as well. First, you'll see it level up to level 6, just normally. And then... I have no clue what the purpose of this was. It's hard to say now that we're 20 years away from its creation, but it's even cooler to see something uncovered after all this time, and to see what could have been. One of my favorite creators on this website, Sonics, released a video displaying a rarely acknowledged cutscene in Pokemon Emerald that started my scavenger hunt for other cutscenes and hidden features that exist out there but have rarely been seen. When riding the SS Tidal boat in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, you can walk over to the window and press A to watch a cutscene of the boat that you're riding on from a bird's eye view. I had never seen this before, but what's even cooler is you can see the items that appear in the overworld as you pass by. And if you've picked them up already, then they won't appear. I think this might be one that a lot of people have missed, given that you have to take the chance of just pressing A on the window, but it's such a neat detail to add in. Did you know if you have a Pikachu that knows Surf in Pokemon Yellow, you can have an alternate surfing animation, where your Pikachu is literally surfing the web unsafely without protection, not good, that Pikachu's gonna need Surf Shark VPN. That's right, it's an ad. Say you're a little Pikachu surfing around the World Wide Web, you're gonna want a VPN like Surfshark to secure your personal information, let me tell ya. With Surfshark VPN, you can change your virtual location to protect your data, watch content normally blocked in your area, or download strange files. A lot 
safer. You can use it on your phone, tablet, computer, TV, Rotom phone. If you're traveling, it's good to have a VPN so you can access all the websites and content you usually can. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is always nice. There's no risk to try it out. And you can use my code BBFIN, dang, that's cute, BBFIN, to get 83% off, plus three extra months for free. BBFIN, type that in. Thank you, Surfshark VPN, for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Now back to the obscure Pokemon stuff. I heard about an extremely enticing hidden line of dialogue, which causes the gym leader Claire to outright accuse the player of cheating. I had only seen it occur in a Japanese game, and I had no idea the details of what she actually said. But after some tinkering, I figured it out, and here is how to do it. When getting the 8th gym badge in these games, after defeating Claire, she instructs you to get the Dragon Fang from the Dragon's Den just north of Blackthorn City. If you don't enter Dragon's Den and instead use an alternate method to get a Dragon Fang into your game by either trading a Pokemon to your game holding the Dragon Fang or cheating one in, if you then attempt to speak to Claire, this will happen. Claire is actually supposed to give you the gym badge in this moment, but she won't because she suspects that you're cheating in your game. Even if you just traded one over, she will still do this. I was stunned when this happened. To have a gym leader deny you your gym badge is kind of insane, although it is pretty easy to rectify this by simply getting the actual Dragon Fang in your game from the real Dragon's Den. But I am curious if anyone watching this has ever even seen this before. In Pokemon, there is a recurring prestigious challenge of getting a Golden Trainer card. In Generation 3 specifically, to get the Gold Trainer card, you must complete the entire Hoenn Pokedex then beat all five master rank contests and defeat the 50-man challenge in the battle tower. I've never even done this myself, it's a pretty monumental task. But once you do this, there's a perk that isn't very talked about that I think is really cool. When you first get the gold trainer card and visit a Poke Center, a cutscene will play where Nurse Joy will see your gold trainer card and acknowledge it. After this, as a reward, you will be able to heal your Pokemon faster. Instead of a normal greeting, Nurse Joy will then ask if you want the usual, which takes away an A press from the entire cutscene, making it faster to heal overall. This reward is actually present in the later games too, in the exact same way, but I never really knew about this since I've never completed my game to that level. There are actually two hidden cutscenes in the Shady House in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon that I doubt you have ever seen. The first is if you sit in Guzma's chair after he leaves, a small cutscene will play where a grunt will come up and yell at you. Inside of the Shady House, if you go in and out of this one room, there's an extremely small chance that a Delibird will appear in the chimney. I had no idea what the odds are of this, but it seems like they're extremely low. There's also no information out there online about the exact chance of this happening, and I only found out about it through this YouTube channel. So I decided to try it out myself. I started by going in and out of this one room over and over again, and it took me a really long time to find anything. There really is not very much information about this online, so I tried to stand around and wait and see if it would appear, but nothing really happened. After a while though, I started to figure out what it was. I think it's a small animation of this Delibird that kind of repeats itself every few minutes. Sort of like the Murkrow at the top of the roof, or the Grimer in the pool. 
There are things on the internet that say Delibird will give you a present ball, but I could not get it to do this in any way, even if I caught it while it was going up the chimney. There's just no way to get it to do anything, and I think it's just a Pokemon that's set on a little animation, and it's just up to random chance if you see it or not. But it's still really cool. There is an extremely rare version of this cutscene that is probably even rarer than a shiny Ralts, that almost no one has ever seen happen naturally. It is possible for Wally Zigzagoon to knock out the wild Ralts during the catching tutorial cutscene under extremely rare circumstances. According to Eevee, Chickasaurus GL, the Zigzagoon that Wally throws out must have exactly 11 attack. Ralts must have a nature that lowers its defense and extremely low HP and defense IVs. If all of these factors occur, Zigzagoon will do exactly 17 damage in total, just enough to knock out the wild Ralts before Wally can throw a Pokeball to capture it. And afterward, Wally will still act as if he caught it, and the cutscene will continue like normal even though he actually didn't catch anything at all. In the seventh generation of Pokemon, there's a very forgotten island called Executor Island. In a normal playthrough, you only visit this island a few times, since it's really small and seems kind of straightforward. But there's actually a hidden event cutscene here that a lot of people have probably missed. In order to get the cutscene to occur, you first have to do the small story that plays out on the island, where you hide under the rain in this small cave. After this is done, the cutscene can happen. It took me a while to figure out how this works, since I couldn't find much about it online. I had to translate a few Japanese Pokemon information sites. But I ended up just taking the boat back and forth to Executor Island, and then it finally happened. When you enter the island, suddenly the screen will go black like a cutscene is about to begin, and you'll see a group of executors all sunbathing, dancing around on the island. So here's how it works. If you leave Executor Island and come back during the early morning hours in real life, sometime before 9am, the hidden cutscene will play, where the executors are all sunbathing together, but you have to enter during this time. This isn't all though. The cutscene can also occur in the late night, before midnight, and they will all be moonbathing instead. This is pretty easy to do, but I think a lot of people just haven't visited this island very much and maybe haven't seen this occur. Let me know in the comments. Most players have only ever seen Arceus in their Platinum game via cheating, due to the Azure Flute event never being released to the public, making Arceus just incredibly difficult to encounter legitimately in any way. But there was a way. On November 7th, 2009, for eight days, Arceus was available at Toys R Us stores around the United States. This Arceus event would release around the world as well, for a handful of days at a time. Instead of the Azure Flute, the player would be given Arceus at the Pokemart, just like a normal mystery gift. After receiving Arceus from the delivery man, if you go to Orberg Mine, there will be a new NPC waiting for you, who will give you the flame plate for Arceus. But there's a lot more to this. He reveals that there is writing on the flame plate, and that it belongs to the rightful bearer, Arceus. After telling you this, he leaves and then appears again in Conalave City, in the library. In a handful of text boxes, he explains almost the entire lore of the Sinnoh region. It is interesting to have it laid out in this way, the Lake Spirits, Dialga, Palkia, and the original one. After talking with him, he leaves behind a change in this library. This bookshelf, that in a normal game would only have a single line of text, 
is now full of lore, describing the Arceus plates in detail. Apparently all written by this NPC, who you could only meet by going to a Toys R Us in a six-day span in 2009. The cutscene won't even play if you cheat in the Toys R Us Arceus into your game. You have to have this event triggered for him to even appear. And I'm curious how many people know of this cutscene or attended this event in person and got to see it for themselves. There's a detail that I don't think many people know about how the ending cutscene works in Generation 3. In between the shots of your character biking through Hoenn, there are flashes of Pokemon that pop up on the screen. But surprisingly, unlike many cutscenes, these Pokemon are not set and will not be the same every time. Not only are they randomly selected, but they are randomly pulled from your own Pokedex or rather from the Pokemon that you own. With this knowledge, there is only one thing to do. My best friend and I used a walk through walls cheat and rare candies to reach the Elite Four with only a single Pokemon registered in our Pokedex, Mudkip. With our army of cheated Mudkips, we took down the Elite Four and joined the Hall of Fame and got to sit back and watch the magic unfold. The legendary Mudkip only ending. The alternate ending to Emerald you never knew existed. Shout out to Kendo who I saw do this first and who did it legitimately. And if you're wondering why they're all shiny, it's because I wanted to see if they would show up shiny in the ending, but it doesn't. So, but that doesn't take away from the beauty of it all.